Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the endpoint when given the other endpoint and the midpoint. So to identify the midpoint, I labeled the midpoint M. All right, and what we're going to do is kind of use that to our advantage. So previously, you know, we've looked at how to find the midpoint. And if we were given two points, you know, A and B, the midpoint was exactly in the middle, which was C. And there's a couple different ways we learned, you know, how to do this, which we'll, I'll get into in a second. But the main important thing that was really important about this was the midpoint A to C was equal to the, um, the distance of C to B. So now what we're basically given is same exact kind of problem, except now we're given A and C, and we want to figure out where is B? OK, so there's a couple important things that you know, can help us with this. And first of all, we're going to work on two problems. Excuse me, I think I'm about to sneeze. Maybe not. I think I'm good. All right, um, we're going to work on two problems that we'll look at the graph, and we'll look at kind of the graphical solution. And then we'll look, look at algebraically how we can do the exact same type of problem. Um, so again, the main important thing is if we know A to C is you know, whatever this value is, let's just call this, you know, I don't know, x then we know that this distance from C to B, wherever B is, is also going to be x. So that's very, very important for us to conceptually understand. So when we look at the graph, you know, we have our two points. A is an endpoint, and we have m. Now, the main thing is, if you remember, when we're, this is from an, a number line. But if you remember, when we were looking at the Cartesian coordinates, basically we're looking at a horizontal distance and a vertical distance. So if m is the midpoint, that means horizontally, that's in the middle between A and my other, other point, which we'll call B. So to go from M to A, I had to travel how far horizontally? One, two, three, right? So therefore, how far to the left am I going to have to travel to get to my next point? Well, again, it's going to be three. So I'll just go over one, two, three. Then from A to B, I had to travel vertically one, two, three, four, five. So therefore, if I need to get to my other end point, I'm going to have to travel another five. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I had to travel three more to the left and then five more up top, which gives me to my last which gives me to my other endpoint, which is at negative 3, comma 10. And we'll call that B. So we'll call um, B, which is at negative 3, 10. So my other endpoint is at negative 3, 10. All right? Um, over here, we can do the exact same thing. You know, it's this one is I'm not going to be battling. So we're looking at our horizontal distance as well as our vertical distance. So if m is the midpoint, I know I can kind of project that my other midpoint is going to be over here. And we'll call this c, right? I know it's going to be that way. But remember, if, if you have your distance a to c, right, if you have your distance from your endpoint to your midpoint, you just need to replicate that one more time to go to your endpoint. So if I'm going over 1, 2, 3, looks like 1, 2, 3. If I'm going over 3 ticks to the right to get to my midpoint, I just need to go over 3 more ticks, 1, 2, 3, to get to my next point. Right? So 1, 2, 3 to there, and then 1, 2, 3. But remember, a, cart a Cartesian coordinate has the horizontal as well as the vertical. So therefore, I need to see, well, what is my vertical change? Well, I went up 1. So if I go up 1, that means I'm going to have to go up 2. So this new point is at the coordinate, um, coordinate point of 1, 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there you go. But ladies and gentlemen, not always are you going to have a graph. And even if, you, um, even if you're not given a graph, you can always graph each one of these. But you can kind of see it kind of took a little bit of time. So maybe there's a way that we can kind of speed up the process a little bit. And if you remember from the midpoint, it was kind of the same thing. We could you know, find the midpoint by using a graph. But then we kind of notice that really all we need to do is find the midpoint horizontally and find the midpoint vertically. Find the midpoint horizontally and then find the midpoint vertically. And to do that, what we did is to find the midpoint horizontally, we found x you know, 1 plus uh, x2 and divided by 2. And then for the vertical midpoint, we did y1 plus y2 divided by 2, and which we call here the midpoint formula. Well, we can use this midpoint formula to help us solve for our other point. Because technically, if here is you know, x1 and y, y1, our other midpoint, let's call this d. I don't know what d is, but I know I need to have a x2 and a y2, right? Because I know that x1 plus, y, or x1, plus x2 divided by 2 equals negative 3, right? That equals your midpoint. So what I can do is I can actually create an equation. I could say 1 plus x2 divided by 2 equals negative 3. 
And then I can do that for the same thing on the y-coordinate. I could say 7 plus y2 divided by 2 equals 1. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, now I just need to use inverse operations to solve for my x2 and my y2, which is going to give me my other endpoint. Because basically what I'm doing is I'm just finding the coordinates of this point. I know that this, the coordinates of here plus here um, divided by 2 is going to equal m, or my midpoint. So to undo dividing by 2, oops, is I'll multiply by 2 on both sides. I'll have to do that for both of them over here. The 2's you know, divide out using my inverse operations. So therefore, I'll be left with 1 plus x2 equals negative 6. And over here, I have 7 plus y2 equals positive 2. Now, I just go ahead and isolate my x2 and my, um, my y1. So I'll subtract a 1 on both sides, subtract a 7 on both sides. And therefore, I have x2 equals negative 7. And here I have y2 equals 5. So therefore, my endpoints, or my other endpoint, is going to be negative 7, comma, 5. And again, ladies and gentlemen, you can always kind of check your work, right? We can always go back and say, did this actually work? Let's pretend this is negative 7 and 5, right? Let's go back and make sure this works. Let's add 1 plus negative 7 divided by 2, comma, 7 plus 5 divided by 2, right? Using the midpoint formula, that's x1, that's x2, y1, y2. And therefore, we get negative 6 divided by 2 and 12 divided by 2. So therefore, we get negative 3 comma 6. And if you look, oops, there's something wrong here. That's 12, 5 equals 1. OK, so I did some math. Oh, that's a negative 5, isn't it? Oh, that's a negative 5. OK, my bad. So yes, 2, that's a negative 5. Sorry about that. So then that equals 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly our midpoint, right? Very good. Um, so let's go ahead and do one last problem here. Uh, let me get the cap to this, because that is annoys me. All right, so in this example here, oh, hmm, we're just going to follow the same thing. We'll say, I'll use green on this one. We'll say this is going to be our x1 and our y1. Because remember, when we were doing the midpoint form, it didn't matter really how you label them, x1, y1, and so forth. And let's call our new point E. And that will be our x2 and our y2. So our other midpoint that we're going to find is going to be x2 and y2. So let me label this as D. That's my answer. Uh, so I put up there. Oh, so it should be a negative 5. Make sure I fix that. OK, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to know that uh, x1 plus x2, which we do not know, divided by 2 equals negative 3. And negative 2 plus negative 5, I'm sorry, negative 2 plus y2 divided by 2 equals negative 5. So then I'll multiply by negative 2 on both sides. Um, so I'm just not going to show all my inverse operations on this one. x2 multiplied by 2 on both sides, that's going to give me a negative 6. Add 6, add 6, x2 equals 0. And then over here, I am going to multiply by 2. So I have negative 2 plus y2 equals uh, negative 10. Add 2, add 2, y2 equals negative 8. And so therefore, my coordinate point is 0 comma negative 8. Um, rather than actually plugging everything into the format, I'm just going to kind of do a mental check. Make sure that negative 6 plus 0 divided by 2 is negative 3. Yes. Negative 2 plus negative 8 is negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. So very good. So you can plug it back into the equation, or you can kind of do a mental check. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the endpoint when given the other endpoint and midpoint. Thanks.